Hello again viewers, Eric O from South Main Auto. We have another repair video today. Some of you probably recognize this truck here from one of the other repair videos where this truck has some turn signal problems. Well, when it was here, the guy told me who owns it, says he's having some problems with his four-wheel drive and it well, basically just acts like it's not working. I took it for a drive, put it in and out of four-wheel drive, and it really doesn't make much noise going down the road, so, but it was evident that the four-wheel drive wasn't working. So I brought it inside here, put it up in the air. The problem was really obvious. So I'm gonna show you what, uh, what I found and then we're gonna go ahead and fix it. So what I found is this passenger side axle shaft here on the front, the stub shaft inside the axle here must be stripped out. I'll go ahead and start it up, show you what I mean. Like I mentioned, the problem's pretty obvious now. So I got some parts here, got a new axle shaft, got a new stub shaft, new seal. Uh, I think this is a pretty easy job. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, lift it up, yank this wheel off it, get that CV axle out of there, and then we'll uh, pop that uh, front end apart and uh, see what we see. Well, you can see there it's not too big a job to pop the steering knuckle off. It's more of a video on, you know, checking out the stub shaft more than it is, uh, you know, yanking this axle apart. So I think if you're tackling this job yourself, you can pretty much, you know, at this point, hopefully you know how to pull a, pull a steering knuckle, you know, unhooking your ball joints, and, you know, some of the tricks there. This is a pretty simple front end on these uh, Dodges. So basically I just removed the caliper, hung that to the side, unhooked the upper and lower ball joint nuts, 
and uh, you can see that uh, just use an air hammer, rattle that top one. You can use whatever means you have there, whether you, you know, it's your habit to pickle fork them or air hammer them or, you know, whack up on the bottle, bottom of the stud, you know, whatever you decide there. But uh, long story short, you just got to get that steer knuckle off to get these axle shafts out. Here's the axle shaft we pulled out. You can see the splines in there are pretty well rounded. So I don't know how long this has been, you know, been happening or, uh, you know, what the uh, root cause was as to why this did this. I don't know if this was, had some tolerance issues from the time it was new and was running around in there loose. Uh, not real sure. All I know is it's broke now and we're going to fix it. So let's keep moving. First thing we got to do is get some of this crap off here so we can pull this uh, seal off. We get too much junk down in the front axle. We have my 13 mil. We'll pop this seal off here. I think the seal might look as like the uh, bearing retainer also. Out of it now. I'm gonna see if I can just use a hammer and a chisel, maybe knock this seal out of there. I say it's uh, probably gonna deform it pretty good because this is a, a pretty pretty hard, but it's also a, a seal. Well, I don't know if that made sense or not. This is a seal and a bearing retainer all all, all at the same time. So, if I can catch on the edge of that, and knock that thing out of there, or not. damage to the housing. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, let me move my camera. down here. There. And now we got that seal beat out of there. You can see uh, this uh, stump shaft doesn't want to just pull out. I thought it would probably just pull out. Uh, so I say we probably better pull this uh, front actuator off there and have a look and see what's in there. So if you're watching this video and you're not real familiar with your four-wheel drive or how the front axle works on these, this is actually a uh, uh, what they would consider your front axle actuator. So what this does, it's, it basically disconnects this side of the axle shaft. This this axle shaft here is only about you know about yay long. You know, it comes down into here, hooks up with this other axle shaft that runs through here, and there should be a slip coupler in here that goes from uh, this left-hand side over here, hooks it up to this right-hand side stub shaft just by sliding a collar back and forth, but uh, there's got to be something else in there that's uh, that's holding this stub shaft in, so we're going to pull this actuator off, have a look at the uh, the shift fork there so you kind of see that mechanism and uh, see why the stub shaft won't come out and uh, do what we got to do from there. Get some of the junk off at first. Take our same 13 and pull these bolts out. best look I can give you inside this front differential. This is that slide gear, that coupler I was telling you about. So this is the uh, left side axle. When you engage it in the four wheel drive, this uh, the actuator actually has a fork that goes over this. I'll show you that in a minute. And it actually comes over here and will engage into this axle shaft 
essentially making it all one piece. So you can see how that locks that together. Let me try to spin the front axle here. So that locks it together. Then when you put it in two-wheel drive, this one stays stationary and uh, and it's locks together like that in four-wheel drive. So pretty pretty simple simple concept. They've used it for a lot of years. These used to be uh, vacuum actuated, but now they're uh, electronic. So let me grab that actuator. I'll show you what that looks like. It's sitting right here in the toolbox. So you can see what that is. It's uh, like I said, it's just a series of shift forks there. A uh, little electric motor that drives that in and out. So nothing real, real complicated, but a pretty, pretty simple system. Usually works pretty flawlessly. Um, most all your four-wheel drive manufacturers use it, except for Ford, of course. They've got their integrated wheel end hub units, which are nothing but an absolute disaster uh, and are always broken. So anyhow, that's what that is. Pretty, pretty simple concept. Probably a lot of you guys that are mechanics are pretty familiar with this. And if you're not, that's how it works. And then we got the actuator out of the way. Let's see if we can just reach up in here and pop that out. Now yeah, we probably could have done it without pulling the actuator, but this is our stub shaft. At least now you get to see what that looks like. It's like a piece of our inner bearing race got stuck in there, so we got to get that out of there. That comes out. That came out. All right, so here we already got that race that was stuck in the uh, stuck in the front axle. And uh, you know that just goes back on the on the stub shaft there, so that's what our new one's going to look like. Um, why did it fail? I don't know. You can see. Look, I don't know if you can see the profile on this thing, but look at look at the taper that's on that. So that thing must have been beating around in there for a little while, from the you know judging from the looks of it. But uh, yeah, stub shaft's definitely toast. You can even see this thing's got a few problems going on with it, where the seal was riding. I mean, that thing's just all galled up and, you know, gnarred up, so it wasn't going to be long and that seal's going to be leaking. Um, and then what concerns me the most is right here. This is the area of the stub shaft that was in the, in the, uh, in the front axle, and you can see that's all, uh, all galled up. Uh, there's a small needle bearing that runs in there. So we're going to have to have a look at that and see if that bearing's any good. If the surface of the bearing looks like this, then... Well, that's the end of the road. Uh, we're gonna have to see if we can get that bearing. Um, have to get a hold of the customer, see what he wants to do. Uh, but at this point, hopefully all the damage is just on the shaft and not the bearing. Um, I don't know. So I say we uh, stop right now and uh, have a look up inside that axle, uh, see what that bearing looks like. I'm gonna get, a, get some brake parts cleaner, get things hosed out here and cleaned off and, and have a close look. Maybe slide the new one in, see how it fits and see if we can make a decision from there. All right, we're back. I went ahead, like I said, I just took a took a nylon brush, just cleaned all the all the crap off it there, and sprayed it all out, good to break clean, and swooped it out of there with a paper towel um, on the front here on this housing. Had a few little a few little beauty marks on there from knocking that out with a chisel, but I don't I don't really see any way to avoid that. So I just took a flat file, come up here, just you know kept spraying it, and did you know just come across it just enough to knock those little ridges down there, the marks we put on there. So. I think we're in luck though. I had a look in on that bearing and it looks absolutely perfect. So I'll see if I can get the camera in there and uh, so you can have a look and see what it looks like. So this is what we'll be looking at here. It's kind of just an exploded view uh, in case you wanted to see that. Um, I think you know most of us kind of got an idea of what's going on now. But uh, this here is the stub shaft. That's the seal and bearing retainer. You know the snap ring and the O-ring that's already on the new shaft and the snap ring that holds the uh, gear on. This is the slide gear that couples the two halves together here. Um, so what we're going to be looking at is this, this bearing right here uh, inside uh, this part of the axle. So I didn't realize it was available separate. Uh, shame on me for not already having bought that. Um, oh well, live and learn. I think we're still in good shape. Try my best at this, but uh, this is looking inside the axle shaft there. There's the bearing. Hopefully we can see the surface on that. I'll, I'll just spin this around here with a pick and back this out. Hopefully we can get it to get it to focus here. But we can see that uh, this bearing looks like it's in great shape. I don't see any spalling on it. Uh, you know, it doesn't look anything like that uh, stub shaft there. If it did, what we'd see these these bearing surfaces on these needle bearings, these things would be all pitted uh, just like that stub shaft was. But uh, 
This looks good. Yeah, I should have bought one, um, but I didn't. And here we are <laughs> in a truck store part. And uh, like I said, I'm real confident that uh, that this one's good. So I say we uh, put a little bit of gear oil on it and we slide this right back together just like we took it apart. And uh, I think we'll be in good shape. A little new versus old comparison here. Maybe this will make it a little more obvious how much that thing's worn. Check that out, pretty cool, huh? So it wore right down, and then, like I say, these are the two, you know, that's the bearing surface there, that bearing we just looked at. So you can see the new one, you can see how that old one, man, I think it's really spalled up there, and just uh, just fell apart. So I think the, you know, you see this quite a bit on, on bearings, and it's pretty weird how sometimes, you know, um, you know, you take even like a tapered bearing like this, the, you know, the bearing will be completely destroyed or, or the, or the actual bearing race will be completely destroyed, but the other one will be, you know, perfectly intact. So, um, I don't see any, uh, any evidence on, on this bearing surface, but, uh, you know, you do this long enough, you'll see it, you know, you'll see it inside the race, you know, the race will be all pitted to pieces and, you know, uh, the other half will still be okay. So I feel pretty good about it. We'll put it back together. I don't know. If it ever comes back and haunts me, I'll just eat it. But I'm confident that uh, we're okay. And I'm talking about it. Let's get it finished. So I'm gonna just get a little bit of gear lube in here. Squirt it on that bearing, get that spun around. All right, I think that'll be good. Get the stub shaft slid up in here. Now the, the outer bearing on this stub shaft is already packed with grease right from the factory, so I'm not too worried about getting gear oil on that. But so it's in there, it goes round and round. A coupler locks together. So looks good. We gotta put our new seal slash bearing retainer. You can see this is already packed with grease uh, right from the factory, so gotta get that started up there kind of wiggle that around so we know it's not going to fold the lip up on. Now, this is going to drive in there kind of hard so uh, I think before we do that we have to get a couple bolts in it just for alignment purposes make sure this thing's going to stay straight on us. We definitely don't want it uh, going crooked. And we got to come up with a method to uh, to install that without doing any damage. This is uh, I think like a 30 some dollar seal so we gotta get it right on the first try. So here's what I think. I've got all four bolts started. And uh, they look like they're pretty pretty well centered up in their holes. Tap, there's a little bit of latitude of movement there, so I think we're in pretty good shape. Got them all started. What I'd like to do is I'm just gonna go around the edge of this with a punch just to go ahead and get it started, take the bolts back out, and then uh, finish driving it in. At least that's my theory. Let's get it started here. Give me much room to swing. Yeah, well, definitely got to start. It's hard to get a hammer, hard to swing on this side because it's stinking control arms in the way. So it is going just a tiny bit crooked. So I want to make sure we can. Uh, Straighten that out. So I'm going to put a little tension on this side with the bolts. Just to kind of help us along here. And then I'm going to use a longer punch so I can get out, uh, get out here to the side and hit this thing a little more. I'm afraid if we draw it in with the bolts, or if we attempted to draw it in with the bolts, it may, uh, it may just want to bend the ears on it. So I've got a little tension on that. I'm going to use a little bit longer of a punch so I can get out away from this thing a little. See if you can't get it straightened up a bit. There we go. Just a little bit more, I think we got it. Okay, that looks good. It looks like it started good and straight. I'm gonna go ahead and yank the bolts out of it. Now we're lined up to start. I'm just going to use an axle nut socket here that fits on the outer part of the metal housing and just beat it in. Yeah, it sounds like 
stick right all the way. Looks like it's pretty flush, so I think we're in good shape for the shape we're in. Just go ahead and put the bolts back in it. And just because we are making a YouTube video, so people don't scream, we're going to take and torque this. So it's torqued down to 21 foot-pounds, just in case you're curious. crap wash it off our disconnect here get this put back in there now that you got that cleaned out I uh, went ahead and got a brand new uh, seal there through Chrysler uh, so we're gonna go ahead and just uh, stick that new o-ring seal on there Probably reuse your old one just fine, but uh, I know sometimes cleaning these out with the parts washer and stuff will really react with uh, these seals. And I wasn't certain that we had to pull the actuator off, but you know it's only a, it's only a couple dollars, so go ahead and get that. The other thing I would say is pay attention to these pads here on the uh, on the shift fork. Make sure that they're on there. These little plastic, uh, I guess they're just wear pads. You know, keep it from wearing into the shift fork. You know, make sure those are good and intact and attach, make sure you didn't actually knock them off or, or make sure one's not broke off, you know, make sure it's got the ears on both sides. If they are broken, you know, don't worry about it. You can get uh, brand new ones here. Um, I don't see a need of putting these on. Uh, I ordered them just in case. Go figure, I ordered a couple of these little things and uh, didn't order that pilot bearing, but live and learn. So we're gonna go ahead and stick this back on. It's got a couple locator tabs, so make sure you don't uh, break those off or force fit it. Just pretty much line it up and put the bolts in it. about that as far as the uh, actuator goes just don't forget to plug it in or you won't have four-wheel drive when you're done uh, snug it up clean everything off so that way when the uh, gear oil gets up to the side of the axle we can make sure we don't have any leaks and now I guess we're ready to just put the axle shaft back in and move on Now I will say this on the, on the front CV shaft, the new one I've got is a, uh, actually I got it right from Chrysler because it's been my experience with these and like the Dodge Dakotas and, and these you know front ends particularly, the aftermarket uh, CV shafts and aftermarket new ones are trash. They just don't seem to, uh, they don't seem to engage into the stub shafts. I don't know if it's, uh, you know, the, the ring they put in there uh, where the, the snap ring actually engages into. You know, I don't know, for whatever reason, they just don't seem to fit well. So anytime I do these, I either get a new one from Chrysler or I'll get a, uh, a reman one. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, gonna throw a little bit of never seize on, on the splines here. Keep that from locking on there uh, in the future and then we'll just uh, slip it right in there. So now we got this whole little juggling act to do here. Um, essentially, it kind of has to slide in the axle and on the lower ball joint, all in kind of one swift move or something real similar to that. You just fiddle with it, and it'll go on. Um, a little move on our splines there. See if we can't uh, can't get this. New, new joints are super stiff.
I think we got it started. took that back off well this is the you know the factory nut and, well it comes with a new one but you can see the new one's uh, a little bit different I mean it's you know it's a regular pinch style lock nut it doesn't have any washer on it I'm afraid if I stick it on there you know this thing's just gonna tear up the inside of the hub so uh, my thought was is to use the old one you know make sure the CV shaft pulls through zip it off stick the new one on and torque it down uh, but I think in this instance I'm just gonna I'm gonna reuse the uh, reuse the factory nut because it definitely uh, definitely seems better than than this one here so we'll throw this one in the scrap bucket I found a good use for that axle nut. Well, you can see that's about all there is to it. That looks a whole heck of a lot better than it did before, so um, I guess we can go ahead and just start it up, make sure the actuator works, make sure the axle spins round and round, and we'll call it a day. See, that's a pretty simple job. Didn't take many parts. Got our stub shaft, got our axle shaft. What came first, the chicken or the egg? I don't really know. But I do know that we're able to fix it. It's pretty simple. Uh, didn't really require many special tools. Um, everything went pretty smooth. Don't really know what to say about it. So maybe you've got some comments or tips that you can leave below or thoughts, questions, concerns, comments criticisms, anything, we'll take it all. Uh, just go ahead if it's your first time watching uh, or seeing our channel. If you like what you see, you like how we do things, go ahead and click subscribe. If not, just give us a thumbs down and keep moving on. So, and that's what we're gonna do here. And I'd like to finish all my videos and remind you that if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.